For Down the Rabbit Hole, which is the special segment where I ask myself the question that I wanted to ask myself, but you failed to ask, so I get to ask it instead and then answer it and pretend like it's an original question that nobody ever thought of before because I asked it. Great question, Andreas. <laughs> All right, so um, what is Ethereum 2.0? When is it happening? Is it real? And what should I expect? Now, you asked similar questions, but I wanted to phrase it in that particular way. And great question, Andreas. What is Ethereum 2.0? Ethereum 2.0 is a clean slate design of Ethereum intended to replace Ethereum um, in a state transition that will occur approximately one to two years from now. Um, this represents a transition of Ethereum from a proof-of-work system to a proof-of-stake system and also from a single chain system to a sharded chain system of 64 parallel executing chains which are converged on a coordination chain called the beacon chain. The beacon chain itself uh, is a chain that doesn't actually store any of the transactions or data. Instead, the beacon chain is the basis for the proof of stake system. It keeps track of the proof of stake validators. Validators are those who commit 32 ether, uh, and that is the minimum commit you can make to become a validator, and then validate blocks. If they validate them correctly, they get rewarded. Uh, with a percentage return of between 2% and up to possibly 18% per annum on their underlying stake. If, on the other hand, they validate an incorrect block, they get severely penalized, uh, in some cases losing up to 100% of their staked amount. Um, although I believe in the first implementation it's not that harsh, but it's certainly a lot worse than the reward. Uh, heavily incentivizing people to validate correctly. Validators also get penalized if, when called to validate a block, they are not online. So being online continuously is a requirement to be a validator. If a validator gets penalized several times as they lose stake, they reach a point where their stake drops below 16 Ether and they get kicked out of the validation pool. So how do validators get chosen? Well, that's part of the job of the beacon chain. And it uses a randomness engine called Randall VDF, as far as I understand it. And um, Randall VDF, or Verifiable Delay Function, is a system that produces a random number generator through consensus. This random number generator is used to select validators from the pool of validators and give them the opportunity to validate a block. So validators stake into a contract, they put down their 32 ether or more of stake, and then they wait until they are called to validate by the selection of a random number that identifies them as a chosen validator, and then they validate the block that they are handed. If they validate it correctly, they can earn a small reward. There are some other nuances and details. That's what the Beacon Chain does. The Beacon Chain was launched on August 4th and is currently operating as a testnet. Um, it had been in testing for almost two years um, and now it is running with validators staking testnet Ether. This phase, called phase zero, is intended to last between one and two years. At the end of this starts phase one, and phase one is the transition of um, the, is the introduction of shards and the transition of the uh, system from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh, and then phase 1.5 is the incorporation of the existing ETH1 chain into the ETH2 chain. And this is done as a state copy, meaning that Whatever balances, smart contracts, addresses, and things you owned on the ETH1 chain uh, thereafter become available on the ETH2 chain, and the users don't have to change anything. 
the entire ETH1 chain runs as one of the 64 shards, and this allows for scaling of a factor of up to uh, 64x. All of the shards then get coordinated into the beacon chain at specified intervals. Uh, I believe those are called epochs. So that's the plan. Uh, Ethereum is moving to proof of stake and a sharded scalable architecture. And the intention was, instead of trying to make incremental disruptive changes to the base Ethereum chain, instead it's, it was implemented as a clean slate implementation, which at some point has a migration of state so that it subsumes the entire ETH1 chain in a way that users don't even notice and all of their data, state, and funds are carried forward to the ETH2 chain. This allowed for much more radical experimentation and rewriting of code from scratch in order to implement these rather ambitious goals. So it's running right now. Um, don't know how long it's going to run. That depends on how well it runs. In the first couple of days, there was a bit of a shortage of validators, but I believe that's being fixed now. I'm watching it with great interest. I'm not currently running a validation node. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to keep it up and running and uh, monitor it carefully because, as I mentioned before, if it goes down, you lose money. Uh, even for testnet ether, I'm not willing to um, do that because I really don't have the time. But uh, I am watching this rather carefully and with great interest because if this implementation is successful, it represents a very significant advancement in the science of consensus algorithms uh, and in the science of proof of stake. Interestingly, there's another uh, question that came up related to this, which might be a good segue from this down the rabbit hole. So that was my uh, question of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free. So if you want to support it, join me on Patreon.